Hi, it's Tim from Oracle Base. Welcome. In this video, we'll introduce Ansible Playbooks. This video is part of a series. It'll make a lot more sense if you watch the playlist in order. A playbook is an ordered list of tasks, with each task being actions for Ansible to perform. This allows us to declaratively define administrative tasks in YAML format, save them in version control, and play them against multiple servers. This enables repeatable configuration, which is a step towards infrastructure as code. We switch to our working directory. We have a file called configureNGINX.yaml. There's a top level definition of the play. We give it a descriptive name. We say which host or group it should run against. We want to run this play against all hosts in the app servers group. We need these operations to run as root, but we're not connecting to the server as root, so we set become to true. Without a become user statement, it's assumed we want to connect to the root user. If your sudo access requires a password, you can include the ask become pass flag when running the playbook. This prompts you for the password. We then have a list of tasks. Each task uses a module to perform the action, with a list of parameters for that module. A module is an abstraction of one or more Linux commands used to perform an operation. The first task is called install nginx package. It uses the DNF module to run DNF commands on the operating system. We tell it the package name we want to install, which is nginx. We say what state we want the package to be. This could be absent, present, installed, removed or latest. We pick present, which means it will be installed if it's missing. We use update cache to make sure the cache is up to date. The second task follows a similar format. We want to make sure the Nginx service is enabled and running. We give the task a name. We're using the service module. We're interacting with the Nginx service. We set enabled to yes and state to started. We run the playbook using the Ansible playbook command, passing the playbook file. Remember, we have the private key and inventory in our defaults file. The first task is an implicit task. Ansible gathers facts about the remote servers. We'll say more about Ansible facts later. The install nginx task is marked as changed for both servers. This means the package was installed on both. The enable and start nginx service task was marked as changed on both servers also. The play recap gives us a breakdown of what happened for each server referenced by that play. We need to configure the local firewall. We can do that by amending the existing playbook. The start is unchanged, but we've added some new tasks. We use the firewall D module to allow SSH traffic. This is in the permanent zone and enabled. We use the firewall D module to allow HTTPS traffic. We use the service module to make sure the firewall D service is enabled and started. We run the amended playbook as before. Ansible doesn't repeat any unnecessary tasks. SSH traffic is enabled by default in the firewall, so there's nothing to do. HTTPS traffic is enabled in the firewall for both servers. The firewall is enabled and started on both servers. The play recap gives us a breakdown of what happened for each server in the play. We want to support Ubuntu servers running Nginx, so we amend the playbook. We want to use DNF to install packages on Enterprise Linux, and App to install packages on Debian based Linux. We rename the install task to include DNF in the name. We use a when statement to make this conditional. It's only run when the Ansible distribution fact is set to Oracle Linux, Red Hat Enterprise Linux, or CentOS. We add a new task using the apt module to install Nginx. This has a when statement making it conditional. It's only run when the Ansible distribution fact is set to Ubuntu or Debian. The rest of the playbook is the same. We could actually use the package module to perform the install, as that works for all Linux distributions. 
but using DNF and apt allows us to display conditional behaviour. We run the playbook again. The DNF installation task runs, but there's nothing to do. The apt installation task is skipped because there are no Ubuntu or Debian servers in the app servers group. So as our requirement evolves, we can amend the playbook and rerun it. There are no one-off tasks applied directly to the server. This way the playbook remains our single point of truth for the build. We can safely rerun it at any time and apply the same playbook to new servers added to the app servers group. We've mentioned Ansible facts in passing. By default, the first task when running a playbook is gathering facts about the remote servers. We can manually run the gather facts module to see what sort of facts are gathered. We can see there's a lot of information about networks and disks. We also have information about the operating system, including the Ansible distribution we used earlier. We can refer to these facts in our playbooks. Let's write another playbook to patch our servers. This will allow us to demonstrate a different type of conditionality. We have a file called update database packages YAML. We have a play definition which targets hosts in the databases group. We use the DNF module and a wildcard to reference all the installed packages. Notice the state is set to latest so all install packages will be updated. We run the playbook and we see the update all packages task is marked as changed. Kernel changes require a reboot to take effect so we add a new task using the reboot module. We run the playbook. The packages are already up to date but the reboot was marked as changed. We edit the playbook to support the two package managers as we did in the previous playbook. The when statements make the tasks conditional. As expected, the DNF package update has nothing to do and the apt package update is skipped. Despite no package updates, we still have a reboot it would be good to make this reboot conditional. This time we register a variable for each task. We have DNF update and apt update. We make the reboot conditional on either DNF update or apt update being marked as changed. We run the playbook and we see the reboot is skipped as no package updates were done. These examples should give you a feel for how playbooks work. In the following videos we'll demonstrate additional features of playbooks. Thanks for watching. As always there are links to articles containing lots more information about this subject in the description box below.